Nobody is exempt from this. If you live in Baltimore City, it could be your child next. That's, right. That's how real this thing is. Yep, right. So we're asking you to bring your young men and your young women to us. Playtime is over. Fathers in prison. Yep. For some of the fathers are in the street leading this madness. That's right. And that right. children got to see them. I got to have kids with me and go around the corner so they won't see their father on the block slinging. Right. Don't be part of the problem right. by being solid. That's being right. solid and on the sideline right now is part of the problem. All that's got to hold each other accountable. That's, that's right. right. All these mothers know that kids carry guns. Mm -hmm. All the grandfathers, mothers, uncles, cousins know that's they carry right. guns. Right. Mm -hmm. I hold all y'all count. Yeah. Black lives only matter when somebody else is killing us. That's right. All right, guys. So as you just saw there in that video, those were community leaders, men, standing up and saying enough is enough when it comes to crime, violence, and murder that is plaguing Baltimore. Not just Baltimore, but also other liberal cities across the country like Chicago, New York City, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Oakland, any city that is being run by a liberal, okay, major city has faced some sort of crime surge, okay? It is not safe to be in those cities. They are more dangerous than some third world countries. And again, it is good to see that you have men that are standing up in the community and also telling the truth about the reaction and response to the tragedies that happen basically on a daily basis in these inner cities as mainly young black men are losing their lives. Now, if a young black man was to lose his life to a white police officer, there would be an uproar in the streets. Everybody would be upset. They'd be mad. They'd be pissed off. In fact, you guys remember what happened to Freddie Gary? in Baltimore, right? Baltimore got so upset about that. But every single day, we have mostly black men being killed in the streets of Baltimore and there are no protests, there's no riots, nobody's upset, okay? Uh, but again, you do have men standing up in the community and saying enough is enough and calling out the hypocrisy and the nonsense. Now, unfortunately for Baltimore, they've just passed the 300 mark in regards to murders this year. Uh, basically putting them on the same pace to have the same amount of murders that they had last year. A complete and total disaster. And also very, very, very sad when you just click randomly on any of the names of the people that have been murdered. Okay, they have a whole database. And, you know, most of the time it's going to be a shooting. Okay, somebody got shot. Somebody got beat to death. Something crazy happened, right? Violence. 19 years old. Jamira Burnell. Nobody is going to know his or her name, okay? Nobody won't know their name because nobody cares because most likely they were probably killed by a black person, statistically speaking here. And that is the problem. This is why we don't make any progress on this issue. But again, a lot of this stuff is culture. It does start with culture. And I think that these men come together and standing up for change and calling out the hypocrisy and the fact that nobody cares when, again, black people are killing each other. I think is a start. However, we got to go a little bit deeper in regards to what are the problems going on in Baltimore because it's not just a culture thing. Clearly, the city is also being mismanaged by Democrat leadership. Take a look. So far this year, Baltimore has seen 299 homicides. Last year at this time, the number was 303. Non-fatal shootings remain high at 641. Last year at this time, there were 636. Buried in those statistics is the grim number of 90. That's how many people 25 years old or younger have been murdered so far this year in Baltimore. The statistics tallied by the Tendia Family Organization. They're dedicated to stopping violence. We're drawing a line and saying, yo, this is, this is where it ends. But what we're doing with community members is we're saying you have to get off the sidelines and get involved too. Meanwhile, the police union issued a statement blaming staffing shortages. We offered a plan for retention to Mayor Scott and his administration, but have been met with silence. Instead, the priority is to charge our cops with every little infraction or mistake. Union officials say the department has lost 170 more officers than have been hired. The FOP contends there aren't enough officers to do basic policing, much less focus on violent crime. 
Reporting from the Bishop Robinson Police Headquarters building downtown, David Collins, WBAL TV 11 News. Yeah, so as you can see there, those statistics are absolutely a disaster. Uh, Baltimore is set to have its eighth year in a row with 300 or more homicides in the city. Uh, and a lot of this is happening due to police staffing shortages. They literally don't have enough police officers to fight crime on the streets. And guess what the Democrats are doing? Guess what the Democrats, the lefties that are running this city is doing? They are literally celebrating as if this is progress. No, I'm not kidding. This is what they're doing. The latest data from the Baltimore Police Department showing BPD lost more officers than it hired each month from January through July. In total, the department hiring 56 officers, but losing 156. The FOP writing, the more immediate issue that needs to be resolved is the retention of officers who are already here and trained. We are committed Fox 45 News to took this concern to the mayor and police commissioner during a press conference. The mayor seemingly waving off the commissioner and taking the question. I'll, I'll respond very quickly. I'll do what I always do for the president. I'll call him directly and speak to him like a man. Next question. A non-answer to a problem law enforcement experts say comes down to support. Political support from the mayor, from the Baltimore City Council, from the state's attorney. Why would you continue to work at a place that, that doesn't support you and that actually puts you in legal jeopardy every day that you come to work? And You've got to have a unified operations, which we... Now, a spokesperson with BPD said half of those officers who left so far this year or within the first seven months of the year uh, was due to retirement. But even if you subtract that number, the number of officers leaving is still more than the number of officers coming in. One shooting, another, and another. The sound of gunfire followed by first responders fills the air in Baltimore City neighborhoods. Another day and another family forever shaped by the choices made of those pulling the triggers. Despite the physical reminders of the violence almost daily, Mayor Brandon Scott and his administration has been saying the violence is improving. Today, Baltimore is one homicide under last year. Deputy Mayor for Public Safety Anthony Barksdale telling me at the end of September. I base how I view things on the data. And that data says that we're going in the right direction. Despite one fewer person killed in Baltimore than at the same time in 2021. Of course, there's room for progress. So I'm not arguing with you on that point. But minus one is a start. Fast forward to early December. Homicides and shootings, while we are over 300, are down from last year as well. Mayor so Scott really touting happened. the city's work when there were three fewer homicides than the same time last year. Just a few days later, the city back up to seeing more people killed in 2022 than the previous year. Leaders need to be a little bit more careful celebrating success when we really haven't had long-term success. Political analyst John T.D. says the mayor and other leaders need more data and proof their efforts are working before praising the plan. Not just a few days each month before the next tragedy happens. You have to have constant situations where uh, you have months of it going down. The leaders claim to be data driven and the data shows 2022 <coughs> is not any less violent than the last eight years. And people in Baltimore are left to deal with that reality. I Man, I have not talked to anybody in this city that says they feel a little bit safer. Despite politicians like Mayor Scott telling voters things would get better before capturing enough support from Baltimore voters to become mayor, Brandon Scott was clear about his plans. I will aim to reduce homicides by 15% each year in my term, getting us below 300 homicides in my first year. That didn't happen his first year in office or the second. Yeah, that's brutal, right? That is brutal. Baltimore, a city that, I mean, let's be real, they're being ran by black folks, okay? This is a black city, okay? It's been ran by black people. And, um, you know, this is the result. I mean, you, you can't blame the white man for this. You can't blame the system. You have nobody else to blame but the leadership and those communities, right? And, you know, in a, in a situation like this, uh, it's not just enough to say, hey, you know, we're going to change, right? Our, you know, communities, we're going to, you know, take back our communities. That's good. I think that's the first thing that you got to do. But you also have to change your voting habits. 
Why in the world do these people in Baltimore continuously, continuously, continuously vote Democrat? Why do you continuously vote for this and you know you're going to get the same thing over and over and over and over and over again? It doesn't make sense. These people, these Democrats were literally celebrating because they were on pace to have one less murder than last year in which, again, you had over 300 people murder in a year. 300 people murdered in the city in a year. Shootings at an all-time high. Democrats say, let's celebrate. That's progress. That's proof that our plan is working. Even though it is quite clear that they don't have a plan outside of demonizing police because apparently, according to the woke revolutionaries, demonizing police and holding police accountable is supposed to make crime go away, right? That's what, that's what they want to do. They want to hold police accountable, more accountable than they hold the criminals. Be soft on the criminals, be tough on police. That's progressive criminal justice reform. These are the people that are running this city. Liberals that are running these cities across the country are running these cities into the ground. They're all facing crime crises. And for that reason, the people in these cities still haven't figured out that, hey, you know what, maybe I should vote differently. Maybe we should vote for new leadership that actually is going to be tough on criminals. That's actually going to make neighborhoods safe so that businesses feel comfortable operating in neighborhoods. Maybe that'll get some economic activity going. And at that point, once the neighborhood proves to be safe and businessmen and entrepreneurs actually feel safe coming into the neighborhood and investing, maybe that's when you'll see some change. No, 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 no. Let's do it the reverse way. <laughs> let's just gut the police, incentivize them to quit, demonize them and then we're gonna hope that the crime goes away right magically it's gonna go away and all of a sudden you know the the communities will be prospering right they'll be flourishing economically again it's no surprise that this is the result so you know again i love to see community activism right and, and people kind of stepping up and taking responsibility and saying look we're gonna fix this problem we're gonna step up and do our part but i think a part of that as well too is is, is actually voting uh, in a way in which you're going to have competent people running these cities, because when you have mismanagement like this, you know, it's really hard to overcome that. You need police in the neighborhoods patrolling to deter crime, and then you can go from there. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.